Hello and welcome to climbingarborist.com. My name is Dan Holiday, and in this video, I'm going to bring you a demonstration on using multiple rigging points. I love this demonstration because we're using this really small maple. Um, it's going to bend and flex as a tree would and as a tree should, and it's going to show us the, the dynamics of using multiple rigging points. So, I really want to ask you a favor. Like, for the purpose of this video, just completely forget everything you've been told about rigging points and if anybody's told you about using more than one rigging point or people have told you not to use more than one point what you know about forces and multiplication of forces and rigging angles just forget all of that just while you watch this video um, and I'm gonna try and cover a few of those things but also show you an actual physical live demonstration with a tree that's going to flex and bend in response to forces. Failures of rigging points will usually come from failure of a stem, failure of a branch that you're attached, that, that the rigging point is attached to. You don't usually get whole tree failure from a rigging point from rigging. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is what is going to happen on this rigging point here. So if this is your full size large tree, you need to remove this upper section or, you, or you're taking down the entire tree, whatever it is. This is a leaning stem, um, maybe the, the entire tree is being grown on a lean and you need to rig out the top. You need, oh, you need to rig out this side branch, whatever it may be. So I've got, um, I've got a weight on the bottom here. So if we load this into this branch, what's going to happen is because of the, the, the load and the distance out on this stem, it's going really, to really flex and put a lot of stress and strain into this tree mainly because of the leverage it's creating on the entire stem okay this other stem is a lot skinnier um, i'm hoping <laughs> that i'm not actually going to snap this stem because it's much much skinnier so let's see let's see where we see see that stem it's bending so far around and there we go, that's the weight off the ground. So that's, that's bent a huge amount down to there. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise that weight using the two rigging points. <clears throat> so now I'll just hold that weight there and you can see this stem especially which was the one that was was flexing the most that was coming down to about here before now that stem has hardly moved from its original position and it's really easy to show why and the first thing i want to touch on is um, rope forces and rope deviation forces so the, this is something that um like really important to learn when you do when you're rigging and then when you're thinking about rigging with multiple rigging points but you need to clearly understand rope deviation forces and then how it is applied to a tree a tree is not a fixed anchor a tree is a living entity um, it's dynamic it it has strength in in different ways the way in which it grows it creates its strength it's not like a fixed um, anchor on the side of a building so we can manipulate our rigging systems to load a tree in the strongest possible way so let's go back to the basics if you're if you're doing um, a traditional rigging system for a, a rigging block like this straight 180 degree bend that will you will have your your load which in the case of my kettlebell is four kilograms to keep that in the air 
in a static position you need to match that load so that's four kilograms on the holding end on the grounds person's end so that's eight kilograms of force on the anchor point so that's basically 200 uh, percent twice twice the weight on the anchor point so in terms of 90 degree bend which that's pretty much that it's 141 percent of the the load so where you had 200% before on here it is now 141% but you've also got 141% on that side so you are increasing the force on the entire tree but don't just don't don't end there like you need to think more about this so you've in, we've increased the force on the entire tree but we've decreased the force on this stem we've decreased the force on that stem but even more importantly i feel is that we've changed the angle of the force so what i mean by that is where we did that first test just rigging purely off this the the angle of the force was straight down which is why it bent this stem so far over but now yes we've reduced the force a little bit what's more like it's so much more beneficial than actually the reduced load on the stem itself is the angle of the force and you can clearly see the angle of the force once you once you load your systems because the angle of the force is the angle that this sling is that this webbing sling is going and you see that the sling is pretty much in line with the stem itself which in line with the stem is where the stem is strongest because that's how the stem has grown so if you're loading the stem like right down the stem in line with the stem that is where you're going to create the strongest rigging systems for the structure of the tree and the same on this side you're loading in that 45 degree angle and you've got that stem which you know obviously it's kind of grown and it's moved but you're you're loading down the stem in a really in almost the strongest way possible and that's why you don't get any flex because the stem is not being pulled down here for it to flex over it's being pulled right back in so another thing we can do to build upon that is now if we look at this entire tree as a whole and if we're going to be removing the tree if it's like 60 70 feet tall um, we can obviously we can use this this big stem here so maybe I'll put a rigging point rigging point up there so in this case say if if we're just removing this stem and we've got a good drop zone over here we need to take out these top sections we don't want to we don't want to swing stuff back across here there might be like garden fences sheds that kind of thing so the optimum drop zone is down here but in a scenario where this stem is a lot skinnier than these back two we can use multiple rigging points to make our rigging system as safe as possible so in this case <clears throat> we've got these two stems that are leaning forward and then we also have this this back stem here so here I'm I'm loading this rigging point back down the stem exactly as I want to so that that is as strong as it can be this stem that's leaning out towards the camera is now being pulled back this stem that's leaning towards the field is now being pulled back in this rigging point this main rigging point on the back stem is almost like acting as a, a back tie to this larger stem it's like it's kind of supporting it almost while sharing some rigging some of the rigging force 
Um, and then we can adjust, like, so if, if I just, if I adjust this now, if I bring this lower, this is where you can really play around and see, and see what is going to happen differently. So you've slightly changed the, well, you've changed the angle, go into that pulley, so it's slightly going to change the force on that stem. We're definitely changing the force on this stem to pull it, like, straighter back. And then we've changed the force on this back stem. So it's pulling like further down into the ground. And so now you, we're, sharing, we're sharing forces between the three stems. We're creating like a, like a, a back tie on this stem. From this stem, we're using the fact that this one leans out towards the field further up and we're kind of pulling that one back together so we're creating the strongest possible rigging system we can this is this is something you know if you're working in big spready trees this is something that you should think about all the time one if you're in a really big tree and you've got like and you can set up mul multiple rigging points, so you say if you've got a good drop zone here, but then you've got a good drop zone down here. Forget that we've got that back on for now. You can use both ends, so you can do all the rigging over here, get like brush it all out, and then you can switch ends of the rigging line, pull it through, and then rig all of this side out if that drop zo zone's okay. So Utilize every part of the way that you set up your rigging system. Pick points to rig from that have good drop zones. Pick points to rig fr from that are gonna make your rigging system as the strongest system you possibly can. Don't only focus on that, that one sticking point that some people like to focus on that that you increase in the overall force upon the tree because trees are so strong at the base i mean there's there's obviously factors like if there's root rot if there you know if if there's decay around the base of the tree yes we have to factor that in we need to worry more about the strength of the tree at the like any tight unions forks that kind of thing that's where we're more likely to see rigging failures on flexing of stems, flexing of branches, flexing of rigging points. Whereas, so if we can, if we can mitigate and minimise the flexing of stems and branches that we're rigging from, f and put force down into the tree and into the stem itself, and min like the the flexing is where we're going to get failures. It, very very unlikely are you going to get a failure from the base of the tree because of rigging you've done up high it's going to be a stem fa failure or a branch failure to recap build your rigging systems so you're working with the structure of the tree to maximize the strength of the structure understand rope deviation forces and how it's going to apply to your systems but also understand that you're going to reduce force on stem on individual stems even though you're going to increase force on the overall tree and play around in little trees like this small maple where you can really get that exaggerated um, view of what a live tree does and how it reacts to different rigging setups if you like this video and found it helpful definitely share it with your friends and your colleagues so that more people can understand and more people can play around with rigging setups like this thank you very much for watching guys